In this video we'll be going over buffer solutions and how to calculate pH or the ratio of acid to base that you need or the concentration of H3O plus for these buffer solutions. So all the problems that we're doing are available in a worksheet you can download that's in the descriptions tab and as always um, comment on these videos and subscribe to the channel it helps us out. Alright, so with all the buffer problems, we're going to be using the same equation, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So looking at this, pro this equation, you can see that if your base concentration increases, then your overall pH should increase it should become more basic and if you increase the acid concentration your pH should decrease so this problem they're asking us for the pH of a solution of sodium phenylate and, and phenyl so they're giving us the pKa right off the bat and that's just 10 and they're giving us the concentrations so our concentration of base is one molar and 1.5 molar of the acid so adding those together we should get 9.82 is the pH and we can see here that we had more more acid than we did base so the pH should be less than the initial which is just 10 and that checks out okay so that's a really simple example so let's go on to something that's a little bit harder So they might ask us about the pH and the concentration of H3O plus for this solution and then this is time they're just going to give us Ka. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find pKa and that's just the negative log of the, con of the Ka in this case 7.1 times 10 to the negative 4 and we should get 3.15 then checking significant figures two significant figures there outside the logarithm we should have two significant figures past the decimal checks out and then we want to find the ratio of our acid to base and uh, concentration of our base which is KNO2 at 0 0.75 molar and the concentration of the acid is 0 0.60 and we should get 0 0.097 so we use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation which tells us pH equals pKa plus the ratio of the base to the acid Okay, and we get 3.25, and we should do two significant figures past the decimal. Checks out. As you can see, we had a greater concentration of our base, of our conjugate base in this case, and that causes the pH to be higher than the pKa. If we had a concentration of acid that was greater than the concentration of the base, 
our pH would be less than the pKa. It's always good to check your work to make sure that that's how it came out. Okay. <coughs> so the next thing we can do using the Henderson Hasselbalch equation is we can find the ratio of base to acid that we need to attain a particular pH. So say you need a reaction that needs to be at 5.5 pH and you want to find the ratio of your two of your conjugate acid and conjugate base. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that one. Okay, so that's the equation we're going to use. So now we can find the pKa. and the pH that we want to obtain is 5.50. So we'll plug that in on the side. Okay, so now we can subtract 4.89 from both sides. So now what we want to do is we want to take the anti-log of both sides. That just means we raise both sides to the power of 10 and then the log cancels out, we just get 4.89 and in, when taking anti-logs, the number of significant figures past the decimal in the antilog should equal the total number of significant figures in the answer. So in this case, two significant figures past the decimal, two total significant figures. And it tells us that our ratio of base to acid to obtain this pH of 5.50 is 4.1. So we need 4.1 moles of PR minus per one mole of HPR. And that's how you do acid-base buffer solutions.